I'm beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next game I play is randomly selected, so I have no idea what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Hey, welcome back to another episode. If you guys do enjoy the video, consider giving it a like, as it does help out a lot. And if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. Alright, let's get into it. Game number 12, All-Star Tennis 99, released in 1999, developed by Smart Dog and published by Ubisoft. Another game I had never heard of before this challenge. We got ourselves another sports game here, but this time a bit different with tennis. To be honest, the only tennis game I've ever played is Mario Tennis, and that game's awesome. So I was feeling a little bit optimistic going into this one. Plus, the game's published by Ubisoft, and they have had some pretty sweet games back in the day. The first thing I noticed was how catchy this music menu is. It's like some 70s or 80s type funk music or something like that. Pretty cool. So the first thing to check is the game settings. By the rules of this challenge, we have to leave the difficulty on default or higher, which was set to medium. Anything else, we can change to help make the challenge more enjoyable. So the sets per match were set to 1, just to keep things at a reasonable pace, and I turned on special moves, cause that sounds really cool, right? The game features three modes to choose from. Smash Tennis, which is just like playing tennis matches you set up. Bomb Tennis, which is something I'll touch on at the end of the video. And World Tour, which which is like the career mode. So to beat this game, we have to beat the world tour. This game has a sick roster of maybe real tennis players. They sound real enough to me. Zoe Taylor, Vanessa Child, Amanda Coetzer, Jaina Novotna, Conchita Martinez, Leon Rodez, Michael Chang, Gustavo Guertin, Jonas Bjorkman, Mark Philip Pusis, Randy Powell, Richard Krasicek. I ended up going with Jonas Bjorkman for my first go at the game. So the game just drops you right into your first match and I was going up against Zoe Taylor. Unlike hockey, I at least know the ins and outs of how tennis works, so I had a bit of an idea for some strategy going in. Right away, Jonas went all out and made a diving play for the ball, but it didn't matter. The game was controlling kind of clunky, but it seemed like it would at least be kind of funny. So struck back with a dive attempt of her own and it was all tied up. But I ultimately wasn't used to the game at all and she won the game 40 to 30. Oh yeah, quick rundown of how scoring in tennis works in case you aren't aware, cause it's kinda weird. You play a series of games, and each game, getting a score gives you the following amount of points, 15, 30, 40, win. No idea why it goes like that. Also instead of saying you have 0 points, they say love. If both players get to 40 points, then it goes to a deuce, and deuce when a player scores they gain an advantage, if they score again they win, if not it goes back to deuce, repeat until somebody wins the game. You have to win six games to win a set. Then you have to win a certain number of sets to win a match. I've put it at one set per match just for time's sake. And the match is the final thing to win. Hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, in the second game, Zoe hit me with what I assume was a special move, which I remember I turned on in the settings. It didn't seem too wild though, so I kind of brushed it off, but I was curious how it was done myself. So I looked up the game's manual online, since that would be something you'd have included if you purchased this back in the day. And it said you had two special moves, which you could do by pressing R plus Z plus C left, then C down, or R plus Z plus B, then A. Very simple, right? You also have to have your special meter filled up by scoring, which is that thing with the circles in the top corner. I tried so hard to get the special moves to work, but it just wouldn't, no matter what. I was pressing the exact button sequence it said to in the manual, like look, you can see it here. I couldn't get it to work once. Even though I couldn't do them, that sure didn't stop the computer from doing them. I mean look, her shot literally just teleports to the other side of the court, and then the game shows a re play like oh man she did such an awesome shot after like four power shots from zoe with me not being able to get it to work once i decided enough was enough and i turned them off in the settings they were off by default anyway i also decided Jonas just wasn't working out for me so i decided to switch up the player i was using I went with Michael Chang this time, or as the game calls him before each match, Michael Human. Little did I know, Michael Human would start a revolution. Also, remember how the menu music was so nice? It's the only song in the entire game. During a match, there's absolutely no music, and it's so annoying. Things were going a bit better with Michael. Zoe took the first two games against me, but after I got used to how it controlled, I started winning. 
and winning more and more and more and more until I had won six games and taken my first match. GG! Zoe's so CPU was defeated. After a match it shows them shaking hands, saying GG to each other or whatever, then moves to the next match. Between matches it like shows a little image of who's playing against each other and that's when I realized the true plot of this game. This is Michael's attempt to save the world by playing tennis. It sounds wild, but hear me out. It always lists it as Michael Human versus whoever's CPU. These people he plays against are all robots. The robots are taking over the Earth, and Michael Human is the only one left to stop them. It's just like Space Jam, you know that movie, right? If he doesn't win this tennis tournament, then Earth is all theirs. Like, look how fast Randy's CPU gets up. Oh, the dive. How do you get back up? That was impressive. No human could pull that off. You get it, right? Alright, look, this game's about to become insanely repetitive, so we had lots of time to come up with some dumb ideas about this game. Anyway, with the second match, the only notable thing is the style of court changes to where it becomes gray. I'm not sure what kind of court it is, but I do know depending on what the court is made of, the ball bounces differently. Also, through each of these matches in the World Tour, the computer you're playing against becomes more difficult. And who's playing these line people, or whatever they're called, you know, the ones who are supposed to grab the ball after a volley ends? Like, they're just standing there doing nothing. They don't need to be paid for that. Sometimes during a match, someone's phone would go off or the crowd would just be talking and the referee would yell at them. And he got super mad sometimes. Advantage chair. Match point. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. <sighs> Quiet, Did please. This ref. Thank you. He's gone mad with power. I had no idea this was a thing, but apparently if you go to like a live tennis match and you're in the audience, you have to be absolutely silent during play. You can only cheer or clap or whatever after a point has been scored. So I guess that's actually a realistic thing they threw in this. Anyway, I beat Randy six games to none. Third match was against Vanessa CPU on a grass court. Um, yeah, that's really all the variation there is in this game. Just another tennis match, nothing really new. You don't even notice the court surface affecting the game. So I beat Vanessa six games to none, then I played against Leon CPU, and I beat him six games to none. Then I played against Mark CPU, and I beat him six games to one. Then I played Richard CPU on a red clay court, but again, it didn't really affect the gameplay at all. Anyway. Beat him six games to none, then I played against Conchita CPU, beat her six games to three, and this is where the game kinda started to get tough. Basically the computer would react to my shots a lot quicker so they would return shots more often. It just got progressively harder to score on them as the world tour went on. And I had no idea how many matches in total there were, nor did I know if you had to start all over if you lost. I really did not want to find out, because starting all over would be miserable for this game. Next I played Jonas CPU, you know, that guy I initially played as. Whatever type of court this was, it looked like we were playing on ice. But I beat Jonas 6 games to 4, then I played Amanda CPU, I beat her 6 to 1, then I played Gustavo CPU. Then what had to be the last match was against Janna CPU. This was because we had already played against everyone else in the game so far. It was on a grass court to, you know, spice things up. Anyway, not really much to talk about here, honestly. I beat her six games to three and that was it. I'd beaten the world tour. The game then plays the credits and shows Michael Human celebrating off in the void, but most importantly, he had saved humanity from destruction. So there is one other game mode this game has, and it's Bomb Tennis. In this mode, the ball spawns a bomb on the court, like a literal exploding bomb every single time it bounces. If you're next to it when it explodes, you lose the point for that round. It seems like it could be interesting, but I didn't really feel like investigating it because I was just so over this game. Maybe it would be fun to play it with a friend. 
So yeah, there you have it, my journey to beating All Star Tennis 99. I know there wasn't much to talk about for this, but gosh, it was just so repetitive. No match felt any different than any previous match. It was a real shame I couldn't get the special shots to work, because that might have made it a bit more exciting. This game might be decent if you have a friend to play with and you're both into tennis, but for single player, I can't recommend this any less. I give it a 1 out of 10 for enjoyability and a 4 out of 10 for difficulty. It wasn't all that hard. But yeah, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you did enjoy the video, consider giving it a like. It does help the channel a lot, and if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next upload. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and here's a sneak peek at what is coming next. Could be anything. Could be anything. What will we get? What will we get? 260! The next Top Gear game. So if you're wondering why there's multiple entries, it's because we're playing them in release order. So uh, the next Top Gear game is Top Gear Rally.